This is the Calvin D Project, where we interview interesting people driven to change the trajectories of those they serve through learning, teaching, and writing. I want to thank you for being here. We're pleased to welcome Kojo Dave out of Ottawa, Canada. Make sure you stick around because some of the most powerful content is the advice portion that's at the end. So right before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so you can get more episodes like this one. Uh, Coach O'Day, tell me a little bit about yourself and your ministry. Well, my name is Kojo. My first name is David. My middle name is Kojo. I just kind of put them two together. People know me as Kojo Day. I'm an artist from Ottawa, Canada, originally from Ghana. Grew up a little bit in Japan. Now I've been in Canada for the last 20-something years. I've been here since I was like 10 or 11. Dabble into music early on, have an artistic family. I was really intrigued about making sounds, but I always knew how to harmonize, make melodies. Like most people, I made secular music, quote unquote, or, or music that wasn't necessarily speaking about God or the faith, the things that I believe in. And then um, I told myself that like, I'm just gonna start making music for God and here we are. I think 2017 or so, and then I released my first single in 2018 under the Gospel Skies. Yeah, here we are. Many of the artists that I've been able to interview come from a family of artists and musicians. Yeah, you know, our parents threw us in piano in Japan from my early age. I was taking piano lessons from the age of four all the way until nine. And my older brother as well, who's two years older than me. My mom, sang in the church and my dad is a guitarist. I was always surrounded by that and my younger brother started to pick up the piano once he moved to Canada. He's a concert pianist by profession, like that's what he does, classical piano. And so yeah, I definitely grew up with music all around. I mean, I was in the youth choir and in church choir, backing up at the church and whatnot. Um, I would kind of freestyle or write songs for myself using like a tape recorder back then and then when I started learning about how to utilize like an actual mic equipment and I don't know starting to get better with it it intrigued me more to create like better quality music and that's when I started to like really try to make music but I guess not to say just sound of music but anything in the art like I draw I design him and my brothers I'm very much a hands-on family and it's just kind of been the way it has been since I was young. I noticed in many of your covers that you have really neat designs. Is that something that you do on your own? Some of the covers that I've actually received them uh, released, like for the singles or albums, I've actually created on my own for sure. But a lot of the recent ones, I definitely try and collaborate with actual graphic designers and artists who are more equipped and better than me at doing it. It's all about collaboration, to be honest. I feel like the art is like a package, so it's not just the quality of the music. It's about what you do in the midst of, I guess, the brainstorm of like releasing it, as well as the cover art, the story behind the art, how it correlates to the sound. It's a whole package, so yeah, design is very, very important. How how would you describe your style as an artist? Uh, when I started, I think I, I was rapping more. I personally think I can I can sit. I started creating some more melodies and harmonies. So it's not necessarily like people say singer. I mean, I can sing, but I'm not really a singer. Like I, I just know how to make stuff that sound good. So it's kind of like a halfway between like singing and rapping it's like it's like saying words in a melodic way and mixing the vocals in a certain way for the audience and, and for my own ears as well so and i feel like i i, I fit into the some people say afro gospel because i've been doing a lot of like afro beat type of songs these days i have some like uh some grind some uk style beats on some of my songs as well so I'm definitely on the alternative side. I feel like I kind of interweave between different uh, genres. What would you say was your first big break as an artist? I feel like I'm still on that journey, to be honest. But I, I felt that, you know, when Blessed Music reached out to me, I think in 2018, when I released a song on SoundCloud, 
that I felt was good for me and it would hopefully be a blessing to anybody who listened, but that was just when I was getting started. Tech creator of Blood messaged me and said, hey, like, this song is super dope. I would love to put it up on the page. And I was like, oh, wow. And I checked on the subscriber list and I was like, almost 200,000 subscribers. I was like, oh, like, this is legit. Yeah. I, I really didn't know about Blessed then. So that was very humbling. And that might be flawed to somebody else, but I, I felt like that was a big deal. Yeah, just being able to do this, it's not my full-time gig, but also like the ability to create an income from it and bless family members and people around me from the gift that I have. I think it's super cool. Some artists that I reached out to long ago, like Asha Elia, who, you know, might have not necessarily given me the time of day to listen to some of my sounds, but and then once they, a few months ago, and once they recognize, oh, this person's actually, they're actually good, and then they start saying, you know what, hey, like, we can work, let's connect. Having artists that I never thought would say, yeah, I'm down to do a feature with you, do a song with me, it's extremely humbling. Recently with a song with Jordan May, and I was extremely humbled. Even when I worked with Sarah Natalie, never thought that like I would be able to uh, do a song with the likes of uh, those guys. But you know, God opened the doors, and I'm hoping to continue with some more creatives in the field. Yeah, and you mentioned Blaze Music. Uh, your song "Miracles" featuring Proud Refuge has over twenty-seven thousand views. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the story behind that collaboration and what was the inspiration for that song? Me and uh, Proud we wanted to do like a song together for a very long time. We just could never really agree on like an instrumental or a beat. Yeah. I sent him a few beats, I think, a while ago. And he actually really resonated with that one. And he was like, yo, like, I want to hop on this. Um, you know, I sent it to him and he sent me something back. I really resonated. and. Honestly, the song was just talking about how far we came I and mean, the fact that we're even in the field that we are doing what we love to do is a miracle in itself. That's kind of why I even started the song by going Nairobi to Ghana, Pia, like just the fact that, you know, we're both from Africa, but then we're still here doing our thing and spreading our music to the world. So I just felt like it was a good vibe, Afro type of song that we had to drop and I was blessed enough for Tess to be able to feature it on the, on the Blessed stage. How do you determine, as far as collaborations go, how do you determine if a project is a good fit? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, obviously, it's relationship. So, you know, a lot of people will reach out to me to say I want to do a song and whatnot, but I don't know them. And so I feel like getting to know somebody on a personal level is a lot better than just reaching out and shooting your shot. But there's also a balance. Like I use wisdom in a sense where we know certain people who are, are doing well or they actually sound good. Like if your music sounds good, I don't care if you have zero followers or you don't have any accolades or whatever the case is. If your music sounds good and I in my head say, you know what, like this song sounds dope this person is going somewhere. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but definitely somewhere. I'm, I, I might just be like, yeah, like we can we can work something out. Or, you know, if you fully know who it is, you've been wanting to work with them and they reach out to you, like usually that process is a lot easier than new artists who are just reaching out to kind of get work done. And obviously when we started out, like everything was done free. It was like, you know, we both get exposure, but even in the gospel or Christian scene, I guess, like, it's still important to know your worth and know that this is what you do, it's a, it's a job, and so to add your price to it. And so artists and, and management who also respect your feature prices, your your appearance prices, or um, your performance prices, and et cetera, that also goes a long way. When a lot of people approach me and say, oh, like, we can just release it together and, you know, we both get exposure, like, I'm not really uh, about that anymore, unfortunately. You have a nice catalog of music. Thank you. And I'm sure all of your songs minister to you. <clears throat> Which of your songs do people ask you to perform the most? In the shows that I've done, people always want me to do Book of Life, and they also want me to do like Fear of God. I'm looking forward to more shows. I have some more songs that I would definitely like to perform, like, like The Veil, like 10 p.m. in Calgary with Reggie and a few tracks off of Fission as well. So yeah, I feel like I'm always making music, so sometimes I'm like, ah, 
I want to do some different songs, but definitely the popular ones for sure are, you know, like Book of Life, Fear of God. I think those those, those two are those two are really big for me. And you mentioned your album Fusion. What can we expect from your album Fusion? Well, it's an EP. It's a I think it's a six song project. It was just basically uh, there was a reference from Matthew ten thirty four where you know Christ is saying that like don't think I came to bring peace but I came to bring a sword I came to set family members against one another etc to deny everything else and follow me Christ is coming to make noise on the in the world to shake things up to how things are supposed to be and that's where I got fission from fission or fissure is for the earth to crack or splitting of rocks or whatever the case is to split to splice and that was a reference to that scripture and so yeah, I think I think what people can expect is an alternative sound. A lot of people are starting to group me under Afro gospel, but I wanted to try something a little bit more uh, electronic, a little bit more different. But still, my subject matter being around the return of the sun and how we need to be leading our lives in order to be prepared and ready any time, as well as how we need to be living in general. And so, yeah, there's a lot of upbeat songs, there's a lot of songs that are thought-provoking, a lot of songs about heaven and the unseen. If anybody likes any of the things that I just mentioned, for sure, that's what you can look forward to by listening to the project. The Lord has blessed you to go to a lot of places and meet a lot of different people and hear a lot of music. Mm-hmm. Uh, what keeps you motivated when times keep tough? Obviously, God, but my family, my wife, my brothers, there's so many people who are motivated around me that I feel like I'm called to continue to uphold all the potential that God has put in me. I think what keeps me motivated is seeing where we came from, seeing how hard my parents worked to bring us here. And this goes beyond the scope of music. This goes in life in general to keep going even in tough times. And also not to sound cliche, but again, if you're, if you're planted, in God, like even though you might stray away sometimes or you might, I don't know, be discouraged. I've gone through a lot in terms of pains in the body and stuff, too long to kind of explain, but in those difficult times, the only person I can seek after is God. And to, so to know that in the midst of the bad, God is still God, in the midst of the good, God is still God. I feel like that's what keeps me humble and keeps me going super hard when things are actually going okay. So yeah, and like I was, I was saying earlier too, there's a lot of hardworking people around me. And you know, my older brother is self-employed, my younger brother works hard, my parents are immigrants in a new country and have paved the way for us. I have no choice. I believe that it's the calling for every Christian who you know has a mind and gifts that God has given to them to utilize it to their full capacity. So I really don't think I'm anywhere near where God has called me to be, but I'm definitely on the way knowing that God is with me. Don't quit the task and assignment. What do those words mean to you? Don't quit the task and assignment. It's fairly self-explanatory, you know what I mean? It just means to keep at it. A word that can summarize that entire statement is persistence. Regardless of how things are going, stay persistent. Somebody told me, and I know it's probably why they know, but like, you know, the person who's consistent is going to be at a better place than the person who's been given all the talent. Knowing what your assignment is, as long as your steps are being ordered by God, you just gotta go hard at whatever it is that He's told you to do, or that you feel He's told you to do. Be persistent with it without the uh, season. Changing gears a little bit. If you were putting together a starting five lineup for a concert of independent artists, mm-hmm. uh, who's on your starting five? Independent, so I definitely put no big deal. I put Asha in there. I put Jordan May. I put Limo Blaze. And then I put I Am Rescued. Those five definitely are very talented people that I, I, I definitely look up to and uh, admire their body of work. You also operate in the podcast space. Mm-hmm. Uh, your podcast, Unusual Vessel. What can you tell us or what did you want to accomplish with the play? Well, Unusual Vessel is honestly um, my podcast of uh, just sharing any knowledge that I feel like I've come across or just being vulnerable, being realistic. 
a lot of people know me for who I am now, but a lot of people also know me for who I used to be and doing nonsense in the world, whatever the case might be, and just being vulnerable in that transition, as well as sharing about what I find interesting, such as, you know, I'm uh, being believers of God, but also being believers of, you know, uh, financial stability, wealth for family, certain struggles of life, whether it be lust of the eyes, flesh, substance use, drugs, whatever the case is. Um, also family matters, things that, you know, one might go through with their wife or, or just, it's a, it's a space to be vulnerable to the audience and, sh- and sharing not only my life and steps and things that have happened in, with me, but also interviewing individuals who are, you know, uh, musicians and utilizing their gifts as well. And so it's kind of, I, I kind of talk about a lot of things, but the name Unusual Vessel just simply means that, like, I'm not the ideal person, but God has stamped me and God has said it's okay for it to be me. And so I am the unusual vessel, just sharing life stories and advice. Yeah, I, I basically be vulnerable to the, to the audience. And you mentioned the advice. Uh, what words of encouragement would you like <clears throat> to give to an inspiring artist? I would say send a lot of messages to people. Like I know I spoke about uh, artists messaging people and not getting anywhere, but somebody gave me the time of day. You know what I mean? And so I feel like being persistent in your craft, that 10,000 hour rule is literally real. Continue to craft at it. Be content with your work, but also be your biggest critic as well. And yeah, just being consistent, I feel like Definitely somebody who's gonna work hard and be persistent should see some day of some, some daylight one day. And then another thing is to not to neglect the marketing. As much talent as one has, seven billion plus people in the world, chances of somebody seeing something similar to what you're delivering from somebody else is very high. So how are you gonna set yourself apart? Are you utilizing social media? Are you utilizing in-person circles are you going out to churches are you going out to venues requesting shows are you messaging youtubers influencers etc put your stuff out there do something that sets you apart because just relying on talent in 2022 especially is not enough what new projects are you working on that you can share with us at this time i have a slew of singles probably about five to seven kind of ready to drop i feel like i've released you know, I released Book of Life in 2020. I released my first album, The Veil Removed, in 2021. I've also, and then I, I proceeded to release a four song Afrobeats project with Raymond and 24 Elders, released Harvest beginning of this year, and just released Vision. And so, my method back then was releasing singles, and I'm slowly getting back to that. So, I'm, I'm working my way to just start releasing songs as I please. And then whenever the time feels comfortable in 2023, maybe I prepare to drop a project. But for now, it's just back to the music and the videos and, and yeah. Uh, for my audience that wants to connect with you, how do we find you? Yes, yeah, so you can find me at Kojo Dave underscore underscore on Instagram. You can also find me at Kojo Dave on YouTube, Kojo Dave on Facebook, literally Kojo Dave on all platforms. Same with uh, Twitter as well, Kojo underscore Dave. So. You guys can reach out to me there. In terms of like the DMs and Instagram, like I try my best to get back to everybody, so I might take some time, but I usually am pretty good at uh, messaging back. So, yeah. I want to thank you for being a guest on the Calvin D. Project podcast this week. For my audience, be sure to connect with Kojo Dave on social media and also check out his music. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hit that bell notification icon so that you get more episodes like this one. And thank you again for listening to the Calvin D Project.